we do in this show isn't meant to reflect upon everyone in the club, man. Some of the crazy, out of control that some of us do could get you hurt, arrested, or even worse. Don't be a fool. buy a house and shoot it up attacking people's families they shot at me and an unbreakable unity they call brotherhood the reason why we stay in this lifestyle is it's because of the brotherhood where else besides the military would you find someone willing to put their life on the line for you nowhere a dark and secret world that few outsiders have ever seen if the hits the fan, this ain't no TV. You guys are on your own. I don't have time to be babysitting a bunch of cameramen. Where they live by their own rules. And loyalty means everything. It's an extended family, and these guys are my family. dark and dangerous subculture of outlaw motorcycle clubs was born in the aftermath of World War II. Thousands of displaced and disillusioned veterans hit America's highways on their Harleys in search of a freewheeling, unconventional life. But by the 1960s, dozens of these renegade rider groups had been transformed into full-fledged criminal enterprises, dealing in drugs, violence, and death. We've had brothers killed, we've had brothers in accidents, we've had more memorials than I care to even think about. They became known as one percenters, the baddest of the motorcycle world. To me, being a one percenter, I wear this patch, I have the tattoo, that's who I am, that's what I believe in, and that's what I do. And pledge lifelong loyalty to this unpredictable subculture. I'm married to this club. Everything I do revolves around it. Everything that I've done revolves around it. If I have to go at 3 o'clock in the morning, i got to go at 3 o'clock in the morning. And today, one of the clubs born in this era is the Warlocks. A nationwide club, they live and die by a creed that puts their brotherhood before everything, even their freedom. Slob Glacier has been around the motorcycle club life for more than 25 years. Well, my introduction to the Warlocks was kind of strange. I was invited to go to a Warlocks uh, run. At that time, I really didn't have time to spend being a club member. I was wrestling. Once I retired from wrestling and my kids went to college, it was just my wife and I, I ran into a Warlock at a bar one night. About a week later, I started probating, and uh, now I'm a Warlock. Slob was immediately hooked by the danger and anything goes attitude of the one percenter lifestyle. But risks followed, including attempts on his life. He's also been arrested multiple times, but beaten the odds and never been convicted. But his good friend and brother warlock Scooter hasn't been so lucky. A hot-tempered two-time convicted felon, Scooter is at the tail end of a three and a half year sentence for weapons charges. Yeah, Scooter's a great friend and a good brother, but uh, he just did three and a half years in prison, and, uh, you know, it, it makes me start second-guessing things I'm doing. I'm too old to be going to prison and uh, hanging out there for three and a half years. It's a dangerous lifestyle, and uh, I've got a lot to think about. Slob is planning a warlock-style welcome home party, but before he can show Scooter a good time, Slob needs official permission from the top current Orlando chapter president, contender. Well, his wife's here. Contender is widely respected, having been through it all. Arrests, murders, even the tragic death of his first wife, Kathy, in a motorcycle accident. Oh, look, look, look. Oh, hey, man, what's up, boss? How you doing, bro? Like any organization, the Warlocks have a hierarchy. 
Every chapter has a president, vice president, and enforcer. The president calls the shots and has the power to sanction or veto any business involving the chapter. You just get here and spend the night. I've been here a little while waiting on you guys. What's up, man? Being the boss of Mother Chapter is basic, man. Every, 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 all the falls on you, man. Things up, man. It's all you. Ain't no woulda, coulda, shit in life, man. I lost my, my best man and I lost my wife. I still stayed a warlock. So I'm still stubborn, so full. <laughs> then said I'm not gonna change. Anyway, yo, uh, what, what's going on now? Scooter's getting out. You've been around for a while. You know how that jail works. You gotta throw a party or. Yeah. What do you, how do you up to get in jail, man? We were all out back in the backyard around and uh, drinking. And he can't drink liquor. He's all right on beer, but he had some liquor. <clears throat> He's out of control. He got all mad and he, he pulled he pulled a, a gun out. Enforcer told him, "Hey, put the gun up, and you gotta." You gotta be cold, man. And he goes, well, I'm leaving. Next thing though, Scooter is in the car and going down the street. And he was swerving, and cops pulled him over. And he's already a felon. He said, yeah, I can bring a lot of heat to the club, right. gun charges. We got another guy in jail. It just doesn't look good, man. Scooter did three and a half years. He kept his mouth shut in there. He didn't talk to the cops. I'm proud of him. He did a good job. He's a good brother. About what, what, we got to do I mean, what about, what, what, where is he living? I don't think he has any parole, man. I'm pretty sure he took it to the door. Yeah, well, he, he went in a warlock, man. Come out, warlock, so we definitely got to take care of him, man. When you come out, man, the whole world has changed. Your whole attitude, your whole thoughts, everything is different, man, and it's hard to, to get back into society, man. Contender gives his blessing. Scooter's Welcome Home Bash will be an officially sanctioned warlock's event. Shotgun has been living like a one percenter nearly his entire life. Shotgun earned his club name and a dangerous reputation before he was old enough to shave. When I was about 16, I'd met a lady that I really liked. And one day she come in and she had fingerprints on her throat where she'd been choked and then finally told me that it was her husband. He was abusive. So I took it upon myself to try to take him out. And as he come down the driveway, I stepped out with a 12-gauge shotgun pump and shot, unloaded it through the windshield. My buddy that was with me that night said, there's shotgun, and it stuck. And me and that lady, we ended up together for 31 years. My first wife was Shirley. We was together 30 years when she got diagnosed with Lou Gehrig disease, and then she lived for another 18 months. She lost her voice first and we was having to write notes back and forth. Being married for 31 years, we knew pretty much what each other thought, so I could almost read her mind, which helped tremendous. And then she passed away on September the 22nd of 2008. Most people don't need an armed escort to visit a cemetery, but Shotgun is not most people. Prior to joining the Warlocks, Shotgun was part of another club and had an altercation with a rival. They threatened his life, and his first wife happens to be buried in their area. Shotgun still feels threatened today. Now a warlock, the club shows their brotherhood by providing shotgun protection whenever he chooses to pay his respects. We've been to the cemetery. There's one way in, one way out. When we get there, it'll be just a standard warlock operating procedure. We're not anticipating anything. As far as I know, they don't know we're coming. We'll give you some time to, to do your thing, and uh, then we'll probably set up somewhere near the front gate. Nasty is what the brothers call me. I'm the enforcer of the Mother Chapter Warlock Motorcycle Club. One of the duties of the enforcer is to enforce the laws of the chapter. We have certain bylaws. Somebody has to enforce those. One thing about it is all that long, flat interstate. We got about 100 miles to go through the territory up there where anybody can spot us on the road and make that call. I'm not good at many things. I happen to be good at, at beating people up. Hopefully we'll get through there unscathed. We're all armed. We'll have it on us, not in the saddlebag. I'll probably ride front left since the boss ain't here today. I'm the calmest guy in the world, but if somebody gets out of line, I try to stop the situation before it escalates into something that would look bad for us or look bad for them. They've got us outnumbered probably six to one if they really wanted to play hardball, but again, I'm confused that they even 
around in this environment because, you know, grave sites have always been neutral territory, always been kind of off yeah. hands to the tough guy. But, uh, you know, again, we'll be prepared for anything. All right, y'all set? I appreciate you guys going up there with me today. It means a lot, bro. Of course, brother. We wouldn't let you do it alone. All right, brother, let's do it. Here when you are. Shotgun remarried a few years ago and now worries that his second wife, Deb, could become collateral damage should his former rivals re-emerge. Deb is supportive of Shotgun's situation and refuses to let him travel alone. A lot of people ask, why don't we just take off our rags so there's no issues, but they don't understand this is who we are. A normal person would not have to dress any differently to visit a loved one, so why should we? toughest part of his lifestyle is seeing the consequences it has on his family. Well, made it. Whew. Place looks good to me. Brother, you mind checking behind the building if you don't mind? I have a daughter. Her name is Sandy. She hasn't been back to the gravesite because she's afraid we'll get seen and there'll be a problem. Coast is clear. Brother, if you're good, we're just going to ride up there and give you a little bit of peace. All uh, right, bro. Appreciate it, brother. We'll be right at the corner there. Hey, uh, guys, stop right here, man. You know, I want some privacy right here, okay? Nope. I wish Sandy could come up here. She will one of these days. I don't know. She's pretty scarred and all that crap. Oh, I think she will. Just give her time. Sure, it's a long ride up here every time. <laughs> That's considered a threat. Unsure of the bikers are rivals, Nasty immediately gives chase. What the hell is that? A solemn gravesite visit has been shattered by a possible threat from rival bikers. Enforcer Nasty is now in hot pursuit. We call that a buzz by. In our world, that's considered a threat. That was a rival motorcycle club. They're going to come back with force. Nasty tries to chase down the bikers, but comes up empty. We spent time looking for them after that happened, and uh, it's probably better that we didn't find them. Nasty takes all potential threats seriously. Let's go! Now to keep Shotgun's past problems from spreading into the Warlocks. That didn't take long. Something must be done. This is It's not right to keep a man from paying respect to a loved one. I don't care whose rags you're wearing. This is considers all 1% clubs outlaw motorcycle gangs. Like many before them, the Warlocks were founded by military veterans looking for a sense of belonging after returning from the war. Formed in 1967 by 13 U.S. sailors, today they boast hundreds of members across the country. Many of them are also military veterans. Like former Army soldier and Warlock Phil Z. He's been riding with the club for nearly 20 years. I was six or seven years old, and one summer night, you heard a big roar coming through. 
there was probably 40 guys and it was a bunch of bikers. When I was that age, I must have been a rebel there because I wasn't scared of it. I was, I was intrigued. I wanted to see. I was, I was curious. But that's, I think that's what really first got me. From then on, you know, I was just, I just loved motorcycles. Phil Z has spent the majority of his life on the wrong side of the law, hustling a living any way he can, regardless of the consequences. Having been arrested more than 50 times, he holds the dubious distinction of simultaneously serving federal, state, and county probation for three separate crimes. What do you think? We got the black already in there, so it's uh, red on the outside, yellow on the inside. Correct. All right, I got you, man. That's on the one of the biggest misconceptions yeah. we have about being in a motorcycle club is that we're just always out to break, pillage, and plunder people. You know, that's all that's all that society thought we've done for years. But it's not. How's life, man? How you been? You know, same old trying to make some money, man. All right. Whatever works, you know. But then we got normal life. You know, I'm trying to make a legal, honest living. In addition to his day job, Phil Z also has official Warlock's duties. My position in the club is a regional vice president. My job consists of making sure communications between chapters and brothers is on the up and up. I need to relay a message to somebody. We do it the old fashioned way. I go see them. Be it in my position, I have to learn how to negotiate with people. I have to learn how to talk to them. They're going to stand up for what they believe in just like I do. Now, we got to come to some kind of agreement. If you don't come to an agreement, one goes to jail and one goes to the cemetery. That doesn't do any good. Yeah, Somebody has to set your tattoo when you get it. You know, I'm going to my I'm gonna let my club, club sign set my tattoo. Be the first and only time he's allowed to hit me. <laughs> Ready? Tell me where you're going. Why are you going to move my hair for it? Well, because... I guardian of his two grandchildren slob's chosen renegade lifestyle is on a dangerous collision course with his family obligations hey sweetie how are you how was school he knows someday soon he'll have to make a personal choice between them all right let me sign your agenda and when is this due october 22nd my wife kimmy she takes care of the kids she's got them both on honor roll let me see what do i need to sign we've been together 28 years i'm older now I'm in my 50s, and I have my grandkids here, and so I'm raising those kids. You got football tonight? Yeah. Being a one percenter, it's hard to balance my family life. Football. Play the whole game. And, and being in a club. Remember that. Um, I need you to go um, get some liquor for Scooter's party. I, I got to do, and I, can't, I don't have time to do it, so... And then the party is... Saturday. If it's too late, I'll just stay there. And uh, I'll come back home Sunday afternoon. We have Robbie's party, football party, Sunday morning. Well, I, I doubt if I'll be able to make that. Like I said, Scooter's getting out of prison. He's been there three and a half years. I'm going to I'm going that. to a party. You know, you know what's going on. I'm sad that he won't make it home. I wish he could be there. But the kids understand that, you know, sometimes Poppy will be away. He can't make it to everything. But they know Granny will always be there. This is something I'm not going to do. You only get out of prison once or twice or three times in your life. If I can make it back, I will. But I'm not going to give you any promises. I'm more of a family man now, but I still have that uh, club mentality. Give me your card. But sometimes my club life interferes with my family life. Shotgun's recent cemetery visit served as a stark reminder to the risks they all face in other clubs' areas and the need for Shotgun to find a solution to his problem. In the past, disputes with rival clubs have exploded into all-out wars, violent, bloody conflicts that have ended in death and destruction. When clubs go at it over territory or whatever, it tends to get very nasty. You find yourself looking over your shoulder. You never know what day might be your last. Twice the mother chapter has been bombed, and twice defiantly rebuilt. Today, the warlocks are meeting in hopes of avoiding a future conflict. How'd you make out of there? Oh, man, that's a up trip, bro. Is that bad? No. Yeah. Yeah, it actually started a year before my old lady died. Me and my enforcer got surrounded by a bunch of them up there, and I guess they felt like they would be embarrassed out of them. Now, I get up there maybe once a year, put flowers out, 
these guys rode up there with me the other day, and it was just up. Something's got to be done, man. I'm done. I mean, I am done with it. In the club life, cemeteries has always been sacred ground. You should never have to worry about it. But sometimes uh, people don't abide by the rules. <laughs> that ain't right at all, man. This yeah. wasn't coincidence. There's no way. No, there's no way. Graveyard, man? What the Well, man, that's domestic. That's not even supposed to happen. Well, that's against our, our rules. I'm about over. We've yeah. been patient. We've been good. I'm about over. Shotgun has a choice to make. Continue to risk his life and his new wife's, too. Or find some other solution. Hell, I'd like to move her down here. I mean, seriously, whatever it takes. Is that what you want to do? Definitely. Definitely. We, uh, we could definitely help you do that, man. If that's what you want to do. He decides to move his late wife's body to a cemetery located in Warlock's territory. Contender said that he would help me. That makes it official. I got my brothers behind me. It's a big deal to me, and I know it's going to be took care of. Coming up, they're locked and loaded and ready for anything. We are armed to the T in case anything happens. If it's the fan, you guys are on your own. I don't have time to be babysitting a bunch of cameramen. And later, a warlock's homecoming. More than three years in the making. Scooter's going to when he gets out of prison. He's thinking he's going to have his bike there all fixed up, and he's going to walk in, and he's going to get a little scooter there. <laughs> Slob and brother warlock Troy are out on an early morning mission. They've got a prank planned for their friend Scooter, who is getting out of prison in just two days. You gotta piss off that little Irish hanger nade, man. so awful. It's this kind of brotherhood that keeps Slob coming back for more despite the risks. Yeah, we're, we're one percenters, and uh, we're badasses, but that doesn't mean you can't have a sense of humor. Troy and I have like 20 years difference, but if we weren't warlocks, we would still be friends. That's just so awful. He'll be back in prison for killing both of us for buying him a frickin' yeah, moped. Man. He's a brother, and he's like a blood brother. He's he's actually a very close friend. Oh, good, buddy. We, we got kind of the same personality. We're both I'm riding a frickin' moped with my rag on. Hey, you know what? You're doing it for a brother that just got out of jail. You're doing a good deed. It isn't like you... you Shut know, up. It's two wheels. What more Let's you going? I'm going to get started. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You know, it's pretty funny seeing Slob ride that scooter today with his rags on, but that's pretty risky because we have bylaws in place for a reason. You shouldn't be wearing them unless you're on your Harley. I can get fine, suspended, but, um, you know, I I'll do anything for a laugh. no more it's going in a truck there's cops over here all kinds of people watching me you i ain't riding it a one percenter to the core phil z is in constant conflict with his wild renegade lifestyle and his responsibilities as a father what's up buddy what are you eating Oh, yeah. I wonder how I knew that. <laughs> Little Phoenix. He's my son. He's born with uh, special needs. Phoenix has spina bifida. At first, the doctor told us he couldn't walk, he couldn't do this. You know, I'm the kind of person, I'm real stubborn and hard-headed, so I would walk him every day, holding his hands, walking around through there. Can you say one percenter? Say it again. One percenter? One percenter. I got something for your birthday. He's three, and he just, he's raring to go, but he hasn't quite figured out yet that he can't really function like most kids, but maybe he's a few more surgeries. When he gets five years old, he's going to have another surgery, so see what we can do to help the little man out. Oh, my gosh. What is that? want to take it back. Sit down. It's, it's your own motorcycle. Despite his 1% lifestyle, Phil Z takes his fatherhood responsibilities very seriously. Like this. 
There you go. Push it. You did it. <laughs> you got to hang on. <laughs> I didn't see my dad from the time I was 10 years old. I seen him once when I was 15. I asked him to come to my graduation from the U.S. Army. When my kid was born, he never showed up. I don't want him to go through life without a father. I want to be here for Phoenix. I want to make sure I'm a good dad for him. We'll ride the motorcycle tomorrow after school, okay? All right. Give him a hug and a kiss. Say goodbye. Love you. Bye, Daddy. All right, bye, Daddy. The mood at Warlock's mother chapter is tense. Today is the day the Warlocks move Shotgun's first wife. There's been a history of, uh, of a lot of needless violence or useless violence. My primary job as enforcer is to try to prevent that, to try to protect my brothers and my people. And you get back to that wall, and then it, you know, it hits it every one of them, you know, every single one of them I personally know, and they're all dead now, so, you know. That, uh, that really makes all this realistic. I thought I was over that, but uh, apparently I'm not yet. And we don't look at that wall and think about that wall probably as much as we should. It's just, it's a reality check. And you look up there and realize how many of those what I did with all of those people up there, and every single one of them are dead. And some of them were younger than me. I don't know one of them that died of natural causes or old age. That alone is pretty up. Everybody on that wall, I can't think of one of them that died of you know natural causes. Facing the job at hand, no one knows what the day will bring or even if they will make it back alive. We're not looking for trouble, but if it finds us, we're ready. It's just a consequence of this lifestyle. Whenever you guys are ready, we'll brief this up and then we'll, uh, we'll do what we gotta do. You guys pretty much know what's going on already. We all know the deal. We all know what happened up there. There's been a couple of buzz buys, which is up in itself because, you know, why would you tough guy somebody at, at a graveyard visiting, you know, their deceased loved ones but about every time he's been up there there has been an issue we are armed to the t in case anything happens because what the, the track history has been it'll be the normal riding order everybody good with everything if the hits the fan you guys are on your own i don't have time to be babysitting a bunch of cameramen the warlocks are ready for anything aware that today's mission could turn deadly but when it comes to protecting a brother no risk is too big coming up armed and ready we have every angle of this place covered it's a high risk security detail so we're ready for anything and after three and a half years <laughs> Freedom never tasted so good. Scott Meadows, uh, Scooter, they call me. Freedom is a good feeling, you know? And uh, whether I'm in here or out there, I'm still a warlock. Whether I'm in the shower or I'm in Tokyo or if I'm in New York or here, I'm still a warlock. But being out there with my brothers and being a warlock is a lot better than being locked up here by myself or on solo being a warlock. Orlando chapter enforcer Nasty and a crew of heavily armed brothers are executing a dangerous security detail. They're providing protection for brother warlock shotgun who was moving his late wife's body from a cemetery in a rival club's turf to one in Warlock's territory. Today is a shocking reminder of how living the one percenter life is to live under constant threat. We're not looking to start a war up here. 
We just want to move Shotgun's wife and be done with this. You doing all right? Yeah. We'll get her done. We'll get her home. Hey, do you mind checking around back, please? I'll watch the front. get her out of the wall, we got to get her into the hearse, then we got about 100 miles to get down the road. After 31 years of marriage, when Shotgun's wife fell ill, he remained by her side every minute of the final days of her life. As soon as she got diagnosed and they said five to 18 months, I immediately quit work and took care of her. And I couldn't stand the ideal of her choking to death. But she actually asked me to shoot her. And I told her I couldn't do that. Shotgun is not the only one who's paid a price for his lifestyle. Since his wife's death, Shotgun's daughter has never visited her mother's gravesite out of fear of violence. Shotgun hopes that now his daughter can finally find peace. I'm going to rather head south as soon as we can now. We got what we came here for. Boss, you guys ready? All right, guys, let's take it home. The reason why we stay in this lifestyle is it's because of the brotherhood. Where else besides the military would you find someone willing to put their life on the line for you? Nowhere. You doing all right, brother? A lot better now, man. We're on route. That was rougher on me than I thought it would be. Yeah. Me too, bro. We're taking her home now. Yeah. I'm headed over to get Scooter right now. He gets out at 12.01. It's about an hour and a half ride, so we got to break some laws and all that here. Three and a half years ago, Slob was there when his friend and brother Warlock Scooter was sent away. And he promised him that he'd be there when Scooter walked out. Scooter just did three and a half years for a weapons charge. It was his second time, so he knew what he was getting into. But man, that's a long time, and that's something I worry about. I can't do that much prison time right now at this age. I have my grandkids living with me, and, and they need me here every day. But prison changes a man, and I want him to know I'm still here for him. I want to get in and out of here, man. I hate this place. Anything he needs, anytime, as long as it's nothing stupid, it's going to get him thrown back in jail. Scooter! What's up, my brother? Hey, man, good to see you. Great to see you, man. Ah, oh, damn, man. Hell yeah. A little bit, man. Put out a couple of phones. Oh yeah, bro. Oh yeah, man. Let's get the hell out of here, man. Hey guys, free, free at last. Yeehaw! Yeah, this guy feel good, man. Oh, this is awesome, man. I'm telling you, it's like there's a beer in here somewhere. Oh, is there a beer back there? Hey, you guys are gonna catch me with an open container, man. <laughs> Guys, this is the first slam after three and a half years. All right, here you go. Ready? <laughs> Don't hit a ball, man. <laughs> yeah, you'll be up by the time we leave tonight. You know, first things first. We pick a brother up in prison. Before we take him to his family, girlfriend, whatever, we go back to the clubhouse. He can see his brothers, get his rag, and then uh, party a little bit. City crew right there, boy. What's up, brother? Man. What's up, brother? Ooh. All right, man. This is me now. Now I'm back where I belong. I've been waiting for it since I went in. The Florida system knows the warlocks now, I can tell you that. <laughs> you know? Hey, man, Buff's got something for you. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Hell yeah. Here you go, man. There it is, boys. There it is. Yeah. Scooter's almost complete. Almost. I'm almost <laughs> there. I'm with my brothers. Got my... Back Almost on. complete. Almost complete. <laughs> Almost complete. Two wheels, man. You know, once you can get back on the road and ride and raise and hell and do what we do best, man. Fight <laughs> ride, man. Warlocks all the way. <laughs> That's awesome, bro. I love it. Oh, yeah. I got my rag on my back. 
I'm with my brothers now. So I things are falling right back into where they should be. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I picked them up. At midnight, right? Well, I was supposed to be there at midnight, and then they didn't let them out right away. They made me stand outside. You know, Scooter did three and a half years. He did every single day, like an animal. Told what to do, when to do it, and how long to do it. So, whatever he wants, he's going to get tonight. So what's going to happen tonight? Well, I'm not sure yet. See, we, we kind of like go with the flow, you know? Whatever happens, happens, you know? Yeah. We get there. We're spur the moment kind of people. That'd be awesome. Yeah. 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 You know, if I just get out of jail, I'd go straight home and see my wife and kids. But Scooter doesn't have that kind of family, so I get it. You know, you sit in prison three and a half years, you kind of kind of watch what you say and do, and you're sitting on bed. Yeah, now you can be a total idiot again. Why don't you come with me? Hey, yo, 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 check this check out, man. Out, Why don't you man. check the out, man? Yo, 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 yeah, out of here. Get out of here. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, let's go this way. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I, I assume the guy knew the girl. He just didn't think Scooter was spending any money, so uh, he just came home and tried to take her away, and Scooter wasn't having that. Hey, hey, kiss my ass. Come on, Scooter. Get the out. Get out. I can't let Scooter get in a fight like that on his first night. Hey, yeah. Be cool, bro. Get him out of here. Cool. Hey, what? Hey, what? Hey, what? Cool, please. Good, man. You're going to get killed for night out. Troy took care of the tough guy, and uh, I got Scooter, a couple dancers. You know, Scooter getting out of jail does have me stressed. He's got two strikes now. So he's got to keep that temper in check, or he's going to end up with a third strike. And if he goes back for anything serious, that could be bad for all of us. Ready? Good. Coming up. Take a little moment of silence. Shotgun's dark struggle comes to an end. Without you guys, there's no way it could have ever happen. That's what brotherhood's all about, right? <laughs> and the warlocks turn up the heat as Scooter enjoys the sweet taste of freedom. <laughs> Today's a happy day for Shotgun. We're here, it was successful. We did have that incident up north, but uh, that ended up being nothing in the long run. I cannot even describe how relieved I am. This is such a tremendous weight off my shoulders. Beautiful woman, bro. Thank you, bro. 31 years, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Shotgun found himself in this situation due to the lifestyle he chose. But it was the same lifestyle that got him out of it. Now, he hopes his family will someday understand his choice. Well, first, I want to thank all the brothers for helping me make this thing happen. It's been a long time. I finally get some closure by having her down here close to the house. Now my daughter can come visit. Without you guys, there's no way it could have ever happened. So I appreciate it, guys. It means a lot to me. That's what brotherhood's all about, right? Take a little moment of silence. Thank you, brothers. I don't know how hard it was, bro. We're here to support our brother. This is what we do. When a brother, a warlock, has, a, has an issue, we all come together to, uh, to take care of business. of Warlock's mother chapter. The Warlocks are free from the public eye, free to play by their own rules. Here, anything goes. <laughs> it's this wild lifestyle that the one percenters live for and what separates them from normal society. Having this party for Scooter tonight is great, man. It's going to introduce them back to the club. Uh, it's good for morale for, for Scooter and the, and the rest of the club. It'll just be a, a fun time. <laughs> Need everybody over here. <laughs>